I'm here with Dave Kearns, one of the uh, most well-known writers around identity management and one of the thought leaders regarding all these context-based things. Um, I think one of the really interesting things we, we have here is really context-based, working, uh, working in the context. Dave, what brought you to this topic? Well, it's interesting. It, it goes back to why I came to identity relationships in the first place. Uh, many of the people who were involved in this area of the business came through the security door, as it were. I didn't. Uh, identity for me came from my directory background and using the directory as a storage place for attributes and personalizations and so forth for the user for applications. Uh, so the whole context there is really the personalization for me of the user and the user's experience. And then we grew out of that into such things as uh, being able to use context, for example, to uh, provision the user uh, as far as bandwidth goes or the resources they could use. And, and then as we got more into the identity area and the security area, we, we realized that context was very important here. It can be a very useful tool when we're trying to secure the resources of the enterprise. So that's how I got there. Okay. Um, you, you've mentioned the term of uh, personalization and, and profiling and all these things. Um, I think w w one of the, 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 the really interesting aspects um, around this is I've been working some years ago in one of these many new market companies. There have been yeah, thousands of them. And we did a lot of things up around personalization and, and profiling, more thinking about it. And, and how can how we can do it? And, and interestingly enough, also in this vendor relationship management unconference, um, I thought I can just put out some of these old concepts out of my bag and bring them again. So, do you believe that was context based and even this uh, idea of vendor relationship management, maybe this older ideas of personalization, profiling, delivering the right information, uh, acting really in a context uh, what someone requires, that they will become reality right now, some ten years later? I'm going to answer that indirectly by, by telling you a little story here. Uh, uh, in security of, of our assets right now, we're, we're trying to get away from the username password thing. We're talking about biometrics. We're talking about hardware tokens. In reality, 40 years ago when I started in this business, we used biometrics and hardware tokens. Uh, I, my first job in the industry was as a programmer for a bank. The only way I could get down to the computer area was to satisfy the guard on the door that I was who I said I was. It was a biometric, it was facial recognition. The only way I could get into the computer room was using a hardware token, a key to unlock it. You know, so those things keep coming around. You know, we've we've changed the nature of the biometric and the nature of the hardware token, but we're still going with biometric and hardware token. So in the same way, personalization which we used to use um, as, as uh, applications programmers. We used to write, uh, for, for a Windows platform, for example, any files, where we kept all of this data about a particular user's use of a particular application. And we created a new one for every user and a new one for every application. So these things just proliferated all over the place. And uh, you may remember Windows 3.1. Uh, this led to a lot of problems because a user couldn't move from desktop to desktop to do something because all of his any files were stored locally. So if you tried to use it somewhere else, there was no personalization. Now that we see that we can store all of this stuff centrally, we can then have the applications draw on that, provided you know, the APIs are there. Things like uh, uh, the Identity Governance Framework, which allows uh, both the application to ask for particular information and the service to provide it and they can understand each other when they're doing this. So, yeah, it's all coming around and it's finally coming into place. It's like the rock star who finds himself to be an overnight sensation after performing in small clubs for 20 years. Okay. <laughs> so I think that's, that's a really nice picture. So, um, but but I think typically for IT, so we have to really just this first idea and it takes a pretty long time until it comes back. Um, one thing I, I really think about is, so we will see some, some aspects, context for, for sure, for personalization profi uh, and profiling all these things, but we also will have it in the also simple authentication authorization space, space, which is probably the thing which is closest to, to reality. 
Um, and so bringing in things like the location, like the device, like uh, information of network access control, fraud, and all this stuff, and make a decision on authentication and authorization. What I think about is who will be the vendors who will be there successful. We have these risk-based vendors like the R code, RSA, Entrust. We have these web single sign-on vendors where it might also fit in. We have these um, enterprise single sign-on vendors where at least to some degree a little bit is visible there. If take, take what the Improvada has done with their physical conversions, it's only a first step. But uh, Or will it be some new vendors who best understand the idea of context? Who do you see as the they're most likely to win this uh, race where most of the, probably most of the stars don't know that there will be a race right now. <laughs> it's, it's not going to be, I think, either the single sign-on vendors or the risk management vendors, but somebody who puts the two things together in, a, in an interesting way uh, so that um, we talk about profiling and the, I think from the risk management side we're going to find that uh, as users keep authenticating in whatever way they will, and we'll let the SSO people worry about the authentication part, uh, we'll collect profiling information, we'll collect context from each of those authentication events, okay, so that at some point in the future, uh, a user can simply present a hardware token or uh, put their fingerprint in a reader, and because the context meets the requirements, it's the right piece of hardware that's the right uh, uh, platform that they're on, they're in the right location, uh, the time is good, all those things I mentioned uh, uh, this morning, uh, that we really won't have to go into a whole a lot of uh, strong authentication things. It'll be done automatically in the background for them. The risk management people will handle the, uh, the risk matrix and decide whether or not to let you in. The SSO people, or the, the ones who are starting to authentication, maybe Maybe an RSA can do this, I don't know, because they're, they're trying to straddle that fence, but uh, uh, I don't, they might be the ones, I don't think they will be, but they might be the ones. Uh, but that's how, it, that's how I see it working. Yeah, okay, so it's, it's, um, to some degree I would really uh, agree with you, because I think that you have to bring some different things together to really be successful in, in this market of um, context-based authentication authentication or authorization the first step and there will be other things which are more like like this, all these vendor relationship things which are probably will occur later which will, will evolve a little bit later so I, I think that's, that's a very interesting position on this and I'm really looking forward on, 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 on uh, seeing what will really happen in, in context based and who will be the players who really will, will make it Dave thank you for your time thank you for talking with us and have a nice time at the conference. Thank you, Mike. Thank you.